Hi, this is Tim from Dim Drive with a quick video on setting up Left 4 Dead 2 with Dim Drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to set our Dim Drive to be 6 gigs in size. And this might be applicable if you have maybe 8 or 9 or 10 gigs on your actual computer. But we can set this to 4 gigs, 5 gigs, 6 gigs, and so on. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually pick the files you want with the Dim Drive's less RAM feature that is specific for Left 4 Dead 2. For example, this game, if we go to the wrench here, this game uses 13.4 gigs in size. But if you don't have that much RAM, you want to set the files that are most important for you to actually play that game. And I'm going to show you how to actually pick that. So let's put this to the side here. And we're going to use a file called Procmon. And there'll be a link to this file in the description of the video. And what Procmon lets you do is it lets you look at the files that you have running on your computer and then sort those files based on how much activity they have and use that to determine which files are most important. Uh, for the Left 4 Dead 2 game. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run Procmon. We're not going to do anything from there. And we're just going to run Left 4 Dead. And we're going to just simulate uh, standard gameplay. How you play this game may be a little bit different than how I play. And the results that it will show you in Procmon should be relatively close to the same. So I have the game muted. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to load the single player uh, game and just do a quick little uh, demonstration here. Let's see. Okay, so we got single player, and we'll do whatever the default is, uh, dead center. And from what I recall, this is going to drop us off on a roof. Some helicopter is going to zoom away, and then we're going to be able to grab some guns and medical kits and whatever. And we're going to do that, and you will be able to kind of see afterwards what files have been accessed by this game. So the game's muted. So everybody's on fire. Here's the helicopter. And the Procmon software is actually recording information. If you look in the lower left of this window, you'll see it has uh, roughly half a million events already recorded. So we're just going to grab a, a gun, I guess. I guess we have an axe. Now we have a gun. And we're going to promptly get killed. So we're just going to run down the stairs. We're going to open up a door. And we're going to shoot some zombies. And that'll be that. So here we go. Shoot some zombies. And... It looks like we lived. So we'll reload, shoot some more zombies, and there we go. So we're going to exit the game now. So exit the main menu. And for you, when you play this game, and if it's a different type of game, you may want to play it a little bit more to gather a little bit more information. But this is just kind of an example. We're going to go to Process Monitor now. We're going to go to Tools, and we're going to go to File Summary. And what this is going to do is it's going to show us all the different files and how these files were accessed on our computer. Um, we're just going to go ahead and just select it by read bytes. Um, somewhere in here is probably going to be the video that I'm recording. If we do write bytes, we'll probably see. There we go. You can see uh, 400 megs almost of uh, video. But when we go to Left 4 Dead, um, or when we sort by read, we'll see all these Left 4 Dead files are being uh, read as we play the game. And if you take a look at it, you'll notice it's relatively all the VPK files and then the map files. You'll see um, we just did one map, um, but as you do other maps within the games, you'll see different areas loaded. But basically the VPK files um, are the primary files that have been read. And just by playing this game, just briefly, we've read, uh, what is that, maybe maybe 700 uh, megs or so for the few moments that we did play the game. But we're gonna use this as a guideline. So if we look here, it looks like the Left 4 Dead 2 and then the VPK files and then the map directory. So what, if we go back over to Dim Drive, Let's bring this over here and click on Left 4 Dead. We're going to take it from 13 gigs in size to a, a much smaller size. We're going to click on the less RAM. And Dim Drive is going to pull up a giant listing of all the different files that this game has. And again, if we if we were to go into the actual game directory here, let's see, Left 4 Dead 2, Left 4 Dead. You'll notice that from here we can see that there's lots of these files. These actually are VPK files. You'll notice that we have all of these files, uh, PAC underscore 001, and it looks like a lot of these are PAC you know, 01 underscore and so on and so forth. And then if we go back into the uh, actual game directory, notice that there is a, uh, let's see here, a maps directory as well, which looks, looks to have all the different map files that are loaded. And I believe we did some hotel one. Um, but we'll go back into Dim Drive here. And what we want to do is we want to select the files that the Procmon showed us as being most important. And we recall that if we went into the uh, Left 4 Dead 2 directory, we had a maps directory. 
and we go over here for our particular play we did a hotel map but we're just going to select the whole directory um, so we have a map directory and remember those vpk files if we scroll down and i've already selected them to kind of get everything done in advance but we have all these vpk files and that's for what we did specifically now if you're doing the dlc you may want to go into the dlc directories and pick those specific maps and those specific vpk files now i've gone ahead and done that for uh, the DLC number three, two, and one directory, and then the main directory. And that's pretty much all you really need. You don't need anything from the config directory. You don't need anything from the binary or any of the other directories. Um, you particularly need those uh, VBKs and those map files. So you can make sure that this is unselected. And, and that is it. So now that we have the VPKs and now that we have the map directories, so again, here we have the VPK file, and here we have the whole map directory selected which we only loaded the hotel map. Now that you have that, you can submit selection. And you can see now it went from, I believe, 14 gigs, 13, 14 gigs, down to 5.3 gigs. So now the amount of RAM you need is you, you could probably play this game with this setting with just 8 gigs of RAM. If you needed to reduce it to maybe 4 gigs, you could actually go back into the less RAM and maybe unselect some of the, the VPK or the map files. Um, but that's basically it. So we've selected the particular files that have importance to us. And now we've got down to 5.3 gigs. So we could actually go to settings and we could change this to be 5.5, for example. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now you just need to enable Left 4 Dead 2 and make sure nothing else is enabled in Dim Drive, which we don't have anything else enabled. And then select Dim Drive to be on. And Dim Drive is going to do the whole setup. It's going to copy all the files, um, get everything symbolically linked and it's going to get everything ready for you to play this game now when you launch this game via steam it'll run it and use the files that have been set up in dim drive and you can kind of confirm that by going to the properties for left 4 dead 2 go to the local files directory browse local files and it'll take you to the directory that left 4 dead is set up on your computer for me it's my e drive and then left 4 dead 2 and for example if we go into left 4 dead 2 and we look at the maps directory. Notice how it has a little link icon? If you right click that and go to properties, it'll show you that the Left 4 Dead map directory is a link to the Z drive and then a Steam folder and so on and so forth. The Z drive is the drive that you set up in Dim Drive. If we go over to settings here, we can see we have a Z drive. If we open up that drive, we'll see a Left 4 Dead folder. And inside there, we're gonna see for example, the maps directory and all the VPK files that we have set up. So that's telling you that when Steam loads Left 4 Dead 2, it will load this game directly from, um, for those particular files, directly from the Dim Drive RAM disk. And so we can close this. And if we were to actually run it, so for example, play the game, when we run it, it's going to, uh, it loads pretty, pretty quick there. It's going to load the game files directly from Dim Drive because as we saw, that the Z drive holds all the map and the VPK files. So we're gonna quit this, and that's basically it. So hopefully this video helped you set up Left 4 Dead 2 with Dim Drive, and if you have any questions, please feel free to post on the Steam Dim Drive discussion forums or visit forums.dimdrive.com. And happy gaming.